the chapel, we've been uh, uh, talking about adoration in the month of uh, September as a vertical habit. And uh, what we're going to do today is uh, just have an opportunity to uh, process that a little bit, to think about uh, how we can uh, make that a part of our lives. So I'm going to begin by just reading uh, Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his, past, his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, and praise his name. For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Let's pray. Father, we pray that you would help us to uh, adore you. And we thank you for this time together. In Jesus' name. So we've been talking about adoration in uh, chapel uh, this, uh, this month, and uh, we're just here together today to talk about that a, a little bit. Uh, what do you think uh, it is about God that uh, merits adoration? Uh, what are some things that are true about him uh, that would uh, lead us to believe that he deserves our love and in our adoration? What do you think? He's unchanging. He's unchanging. Why, why is that a good thing? How does that encourage you? Like when you mess up, you know that it's not going to really matter to him because he still loves you and he still forgives you. And you know it's not going to change. Yeah, he's, he's always faithful and his love lasts forever. And you want to love him back for that. Uh, anything else about uh, God that uh, would stimulate worship or adoration? He's powerful. He created everything and made us the way we are, all individual and unique, and that's just so amazing. One of the things that I like to think about whenever I think of God's power, though, is, is also His goodness. You know, people sometimes can be powerful, but they can be bad. Uh, the thing that is so uh, adorable uh, about God is that uh, he's, uh, he's powerful and, and He's good. Uh, anything else about his character, about uh, his being or person that would stimulate adoration in you? Well, he cares for us. Like He sent his son to die on the cross for us, and we should love him for that. Okay, that, it all comes together in, uh, in what he did through Jesus. What would you think... Um, uh, if someone were to uh, ask you if, uh, is this something that God needs? Does, does God need our adoration? Is something lacking in Him uh, unless we, we give it to Him? What do you think of that? It's not something He needs as much as it's something He deserves. He's given us so much and I guess He needs it in the sense that it'd be wrong if He didn't have it because of all He's done. When do you think uh, it's uh, easier or harder to adore God? When your life's going well or when it's not going so well? Probably harder to adore Him when things aren't going well. Why do you think that? Um, because you think that maybe you just like, it's like forgetting about you or you just, you just don't think that He's helping you as much as He can. Do you think there's a, a particular uh, need for us to adore Him when we're going through difficult things in, in life? Yeah, because I think He rewards that. How does He do that? I think like just when we adore Him, we draw closer to Him and we better understand His love for us. It, it sort of takes our gaze off of ourselves too if we're going through a tough time. Mm -hmm. And if we can focus not so much on uh, what's hurting us, but uh, who He is, uh, maybe that makes it hurt less a little bit. How about the other uh, side? How about when things are going really uh, great? Is it important that we adore Him then too? Yes, because when everything's going fine, it's hard to realize that you need God because when everything's going bad, you're like, I need to pray and ask God if He can heal this person or fix this in my life. But when everything's going fine, it's hard to realize you need Him. Yeah, Jesus says to rich people, sometimes it's hard for them to enter the kingdom because they don't think they have any need uh, for God. They have everything they have. And so 
uh, it's important to adore uh, the Lord when uh, things are going well as as well. But I think this idea of this idea of adoration being a, a habit, a vertical habit, does the idea of habit make it sound unreal, like brushing your teeth or something like that? Uh, what do you think the idea of, of uh, vertical habits? I mean, like it's a good idea because it becomes like a daily thing because a habit is something you do like on a regular basis. Um, and like adoring God is something you should do regularly. But then again, you don't want it to become a routine and habits can always be somewhat of a routine. Do you think that there's a way to make it not become routine? Do you think it, there's a way to make adoring the Lord uh, fresh every day in your life? what you adorn for each day, or like what passage you're reading, or like how you adorn him. I do that in my own devotions. Sometimes my adoration praying will focus on who and what Jesus is and what he uh, has done. And sometimes uh, my uh, adoration focuses on the Father, and sometimes it focuses on uh, the Spirit. And uh, it's, that's not something I, I program. It's something that just changes from, uh, from day to day. Uh, Mr. Beebe said that uh, uh, adoring God is like uh, a husband adoring his wife. What did you think about that? That was in the chapel in uh, Psalm 47. Uh, is, uh, is adoring God uh, like uh, a husband adoring a wife somehow? I think it is, and I think it's also a big wake-up call because it's making you realize that um, <clears throat> it's so easy to get caught up in your friendships and your physical relationships and then that made me realize, I guess, that you need to be like that with God. Like, you love your friends, but you should be loving God so much more than you love your friends. I found it helpful because it reminds me that God is not some concept, but a person. And, and just as uh, I, I know my wife is a, is a real person, uh, I can know God that way uh, as, as well. Uh, do you think that um, uh, there are some concrete ways that we can uh, adore God here at Philma? In chapel. In chapel? Mm -hmm. uh, we sure hope so. Uh, we really want chapel to be a very special time for uh, students and for faculty and, and, and staff. You guys work really hard as students here at Philma Day. <coughs> and to be able to have that half an hour once a week to, just to set aside all the books and everything like that.